Hey everyone, Budget Nerd here. As you already know, we'll check out this guy. The RTAXE7800 by Asus. It's one of those new fancy Wi-Fi 6E routers. This one releasing November of last year. So stick around and we'll check it out. Wi-Fi 6 has been around for quite a while now. First approved back in March of 2014 with Wi-Fi 6E hardware, starting to pop up in the consumer market as early as 2021. The 6E flavor takes advantage of the much larger chunk of license exempt bands between 5.925 and 7.125 gigahertz. That gives your 6E Wi-Fi router a 1.2 gigahertz wide range to play in, and that's one thing that uh, allows it speed boost that and slightly faster transmission rates. Keep in mind, not all countries have adopted this 6E standard, so check your country's rules to see. But I can tell you this router will work fine in the US and several other countries. There's a link in the description below to a site that will tell you what your country has adopted. Check it out if you want. It also goes without saying, but I'll say it. You also do have to have a Wi-Fi 6E compatible wireless device to take advantage of this 6E band. With that out of the way, let's look at the box. Since you tack on the 6 GHz, you get a tri-band router. You also get a 2.5 GHz port, which is great for hooking up that multi-gigabit equipment like a switch or an extra access point. It also supports ASUS's AI Mesh system, which lets you effortlessly add other ASUS AI Mesh routers and make a mesh network. It has some pretty good filtering and parental controls, more on that later. It also has a 1.7 GHz quad-core processor to do all the processor stuff you could ever need. Rounding out the back of the box, you can see there are five RJ45 ports. You can change the two blue ports to make one or both of them WAN, with one of them being that multi-gigabit port I already mentioned. There's also a USB 3.2 port as well, which can serve as a file server, print server, and much more. Here are some specs for you incredibly nerdy viewers. Total up all those data rates for each band, and then likely round, and you get that 7800 that's in the name. I think the router looks pretty great. It's got a very stylized design without looking too silly or being too large like some high-end routers can. The geometry and these lines the antennas create and the lines left in the top shell when they're up really look slick. Moving on, all that's left in the box now is an ethernet cable and the power adapter. Hooking it up was easy, but do not forget there's a power switch under the router. Once hooked up, head to 192.168.1.1, go through the wizard, selecting how you want the ports set up, how you get an IP address from your ISP, if unsure, just select automatic IP, then name your Wi-Fi networks, give them a password, and once done, sign in. You're greeted with a very dark teal and gray interface, I think it's easy to read, it's organized well, and maybe teal and gray are Asus's colors, dunno. It would be nice if I could change them. Yes, Asus? No? Okay. On this very teal and gray main page, you get the internet connection status, the number of connected clients, an overview of your Wi-Fi names and settings, and a navigation pane on the left. Checking out the device list, you get a pretty good looking list of what is on your network, along with uptime, data usage and signal strength, and what interface it's using. At the top, you can separate them by interface, which I think is handy. Under AI Mesh, you can configure your ASUS Mesh system. I couldn't really fiddle with it, but if you want to cover a larger area with other ASUS AI Mesh routers, you could do that here because I didn't get another one. You can configure a guest network. Under AI protection, the router will look at certain settings and configurations and give you recommendations 
on how to further secure your router and network by recommending router settings, blocking malicious sites, and by blocking infected devices. These may not be enough to protect a corporate environment, but for your average home network, these are welcome features. You get some neat bars and dials to watch under Adaptive QoS, also some neat info with their traffic analyzer. There's nothing to show here since I just enabled it, but data did eventually show up. Under USB application, you can see there are many things you can use that USB port for, such as sharing a USB drive over the internet, which may not be for everyone, media sharing, hooking up a printer, using it to tether your 3 or 4G connection, time machine, which I assume is some kind of backup, and have the router act as a download manager, maybe? AI Cloud appears to let you share your files over the internet to a browser or the ASUS app. You'll need to register for ASUS DDNS, though also not for everyone for security reasons. Below this, you have your typical router options with Amazon Alexa and VPN standing out. You can control some router features with Alexa, and VPN lets you easily set up a VPN service on your router. There is also Asus Instant Guard, giving you shareable, secure VPN through their app. Blocking malicious sites and content, as we've already discussed, is great, but let me go back to one section we've not looked at yet, that's parental controls. Most routers have some sort of parental controls, but this router does seem to go a few steps farther, which is awesome. I'm a sucker for good parental controls, so let's spend a minute talking about them. Turning them on gives you the option to select a device and then assign some rules to it, such as blocking adult content, IM and communication traffic, PSP and file transfer traffic, and streaming and entertainment traffic. You can even expand the section and get a bit more granular. Along the top, you can set a time schedule for devices, limiting when they can access the internet. This is all well and good, but let's jump into the app, where you can actually do more. As mentioned, the app is called Asus Router, real original Asus. In here, you can select devices, assign them to families, specify your child's age, what devices they use, and then apply rules. However, the coolest thing are the rules you can assign to said device. Click a device and then click on Safe Browsing. You can block malicious content, adult content, block ads, which is awesome, and select Ad Block plus Family and do both. However, why there's not an option for blocking all three, ads, adult content, and malicious content? It's a bit of a head scratcher, but maybe the Ad Block and Family option does block malicious content as well, but it's not clear. Also, I wish I could control some of this stuff in the web GUI, but oh well. The ad blocker worked great, blocking around 65% of ads on my phone. I'll take it. Some of my most visited sites were ad-free, which is worth the price alone to me. If you're insanely nerdy, and I know you are, you can check out the log of sites that were blocked on my phone in the description below. As for the Wi-Fi coverage, it's great. With the 2.4 GHz covering the whole house, the 5 GHz signal did cover less, and as expected, the 6 GHz had a little bit less coverage, but both signals were enough to cover the house. To round out this review with more nerdy specs, I present to you an internet and local speed test. In my last video featuring a speed test, I was questioned about how I do them, which is fair. I've mentioned it before, but I guess it's worth another mention. I transfer a large video file from my wired gigabit NAS with platter hard drives over Wi-Fi to my Wi-Fi 5 laptop. Wi-Fi 5 is plenty fast for tests like these, at least for now. I do this test sitting in the next room on my sofa and then again in the same room as the router or access point I'm testing. And that's it. Simple and repeatable. I did said test and got 112 megabytes per second, which is excellent. Near the router, I got the same speeds, which is the fastest router I've tested on the channel, even beating the TP-Link AX3600. I do have one 6E capable device, my cell phone, 
and performed the exact same test on it and saw transfer speeds jump by about 5 to 10 megabytes per second on 6E, which is nice. Internet test speeds were also the fastest I've seen, peaking at 380 megabits per second. I only pay for 300, so some thanks goes out to my ISP, I guess. So, zero complaints, zero issues, nice looking, good footprint, great parental controls, and great speeds. I bet you're probably wondering how much this router costs. Well, at the time of recording, it's $280. For sure, a more high-end option, but with what it offers and its 6E capabilities and speed, I would for sure recommend it. Would I spend my own money on it? Also yes, and that's good. If you have some 6E capable devices and are in a country that can take advantage of 6E, consider this ASUS. It's a great package. There's also a link below if you are interested, and thanks for watching.